Hey everybody, it's me, Tony Pantelresco. Usually we do shows during the week, but this week and last week there was a holiday, so as a result, the network was down. So I decided I might just go solo today again like I do sometimes and talk about everything. <laughs> everything. Um, I'm going to kind of uh, touch on a lot of things that I've already touched on. And I want to sort of remind everybody on things because we have a tendency to forget because there's so much bullshit out there that's being propagated as health and so much crap being sold as a health uh, item that a lot of you have a tendency to forget where we're living, what's going on, and the nature of things that we're dealing with today and how things can be impacted just by a simple uh, light exposure. We have to remember... 50 years ago, when people were taking vitamins and taking fats and taking, like, they were taking wheat germ oil, they were taking olive oil, they were taking butter, they were taking lard, they were taking tallow. And today's emphasis on omega 3s, which do absolutely nothing but break you down on the cellular level, selling you proteins that have asaphine, uh, potassium, sucralose, aspartame, new, neotame adding soy lecithin to it, and the list goes on and on. Back then, in those days, you had whey protein, whey concentrates. You didn't have the isolates, which came much later. But, and then even then, they were being sweetened with aspartame, and now we have sucralose, which is a lot of horse hockey, a lot of bullshit as well. And we had, you know, canola oil was at one time considered a health food, and today we know that canola oil is just a de detrimental pile of rubbish. You know, being from Canada, I can tell you straight out that it's the worst frickin' oil that ever came out. It was an industrial oil, industrial lubricant, just like C60, another industrial lubricant. And now, today somebody from uh, the United Kingdom sent me articles about um, C60 now being put in argon oil. You have to be aware the health food industry is now out to hijack you with more bullshit on propagating products that's going to further exasperate you on an AI level, exasperate you on a genetic level, uh, integrate you more with circuitry that shouldn't be in your body, and it's going to create a major, major breakdown on the mitochondria where you will not be able to produce the proper ATP, which not will not be able to access the DNA cor uh, correctly, and you will feel tired, listless, broken down, lethargic, and in in operable you won't be able to work you won't be able to function yet you'll be driving down the road and you be you know you pull out your cell phone next thing you know you're in some sort of la la land cell phone by far is the weapon of mass destruction anybody who doesn't understand the nature of 5g 1g 2g 3g 4g 5g and you're buying a technology with the presumption or assumption that you are buying something that is safe, you are sadly mistaken. When you're opening up your phone, you're not accessing a satellite, you are accessing a tower, which then fires a beam down on the earth and you have what is known as a ground wave emitting from these, these networks that are going across the land which are violating and corrupting a lot of things, activating programs that have been released from the sky, released from the, from the soil, released from the propagation in the plants, which would already have these genetic anomalies uh, embedded into their uh, DNA coding, which with a certain frequency could activate whatever the program demands. Talking nanobiology, fullerenes, quantum dots, you know, bots, nano cages. There's so much to the nano that everyone is still thinking in terms of metallic material. Concentrated tiny particles that are causing the body to break down. And nobody's paying attention to the mimetic aff effect of these, this technology. Mimetics basically can be uh, our programs which are embedded into the nano which then can use your proteins to assemble whatever the program wants them to assemble. We can assemble a tick, we can assemble a bug, we can assemble a fish, we can assemble whatever we want to assemble using this technology and activating uh, a quantum dot 
array within this technology to make it appear to look like it is alive. We're dealing with technologies today that 30 years ago was considered sci-fi. Today isn't fiction anymore. Remember reading the comic book Magnus the Robot Fighter? Well, I assure you, all of you are going to be that Magnus. Those of you who are opposed to artificial intelligence, those of you who fold to the transgender uh, freakish uh, abominations that are going on, those of you who are against the idea of being integrated to an artificial intelligence, those of you who do not wish to be a mechanical contrivance that's going to be part of a, uh, a bigger construct, uh, those of you who really believe in the concepts of freedom and uh, pursuit of, of your own evolution without the need of an architectural or an integrated c uh, construct of technology and biology. You are going to be that Magnus the Robot Fighter, Magnus the AI Fighter, Magnus the Synthetic Biology Fighter, Magnus the Bot Fighter. You're going to be looking at things from a whole entirely different perspective these days because a lot of the shit they're selling, the propagation of the materials that they're propagating, is all uh, being sabotaged in a way where when you consume it, it begins to integrate into your system, it begins to assemble, it begins to spread, it begins to become or appear to be something that may look pathology, like a pathology, but in all reality isn't. When we're talking accessing you with frequencies, accessing you with programming, accessing you to control you, there are so many ways that's being done today. Your, your phone, again, the weapon of mass destruction, emitting a EMF field so that it can slow down the EMF field coming to the phone. Anything in the line of fire of those fields become hit with the destruction of your mitochondria, destruction of genetic code, destruction of your DNA begin to accelerate because if you are constantly being in an area or an environment where others have access to this technology as well and you're firing these frequencies at each other, you're creating mayhem on a genetic level. Anything after 1G became a cluster, a cluster, a mess, a biologic, biological nightmare, and it has not stopped. There was an experiment conducted in, in uh, the Netherlands over the weekend, and f I forget how many birds dropped out of the sky. I forget the number. It might have been 5 million, 500,000, 50,000, but it was an extraordinary amount of birds, you know, avian life that just dropped out of the sky, completely scrambled their brain. If you want to put a stop to 5G, quit using the technology. Quit buying the technology. Quit supporting the technology. Quit buying the supplements that are going to augment or interfere or integrate with your biology to become more assimilable to the technology. We're talking about lights, Li-Fi, blue beam technology which, can, which goes through your eyes to access your brain to create an anomaly of programming inside of you so that you become more conducive to the program at hand. You become what they want you to become. You, you think like they want you to think. You believe what they want you to believe. When they show you shit on television, news and things about people acting a certain way, things going on in a certain uh, realm, and you start believing the, the bullshit and the fantasies, it's par part of it is because you haven't the capacity any longer to have critical thinking. Your rationality is based on the programming that's being piped into your head. How many times have you all said things thinking that it was a fact and when you're asked the question, where did you get that information from, you don't know. Could it be potentially that you had this downloaded into your brain by Li-Fi, Wi-Fi, EMF, ELF, to, uh, to, uh, terahertz frequencies? or blue beam uh, optogenetics or sonogenetic type frequencies. The songs you're listening to, the music that you're hearing on the radio filled with uh, blue beam technology accessing you so that you can become programmed. 
believing the music, believing the lyrics of the music, when in reality that those lyrics are designed to cause you to create to have mayhem in your life to live the drama of the music to live the program that's being uh, set that's what's going on any media forum that you're seeing anything that they're showing you today is all by design to interfere with your process to have rational thinking investigative thinking critical thinking where you're no longer just accepting somebody's at face value, but you do your own research to identify if the facts in hand are true. When you look at a research documentation and they give you all their references, look at the references and then go beyond what they show you. Understand how they came to the conclusions they have come to. Recognize that just because they came to that conclusion doesn't mean it is a status of uh, of the of the evidence it doesn't mean it's conclusive evidence it means this is how they got that information and if you can't replicate the the and get the same thing then something is wrong something was left out something was put in something had been modified when you look at C60 listen to Cliff Hill and he says that you are that we need to use six foot rats to conduct the experiment since there none has been conducted and you go out and buy this shit are you retarded are you insane a product that hasn't been tried at all except you see one study that they have perpetrated which is I would dare say needs to be redone with an with a independent lab you know to see whether or not this is true the studies I see with rats swallowing carbon C60 it destroyed their intestinal tract shut down their DNA and it literally shredded them to death from the inside out that's the research I see and this is and I would find this research more uh, acquiescing to the truth rather than what they're saying because they are selling a product marketing science is mostly bullshit Marketing science is by design set to sell you something and show you the illusion or the imagined slights of these people who are perpetrating these products. You can no longer, in any way, shape, or form, believe what you're hearing or seeing today without examining it further. Some of you don't have any money. If you don't have any money, then perhaps you shouldn't buy any of this shit anyway. Keep it simple. Keep it basic. Keep it. To, keep to what you can do. Because in all essence, when we're looking at some of this stuff, we have to realize that not everything we're being told is accurate. And the studies that they are perpetrating are not in real-time studies. In other words, they are doing things in the lab in a controlled environment without some of the things that other environments are exposed to, i.e. radio frequencies, EMF frequencies, EMP pulses, um, AM and FM bands, com a consolidation or congregation of frequencies hitting all at once, terahertz frequencies perhaps. We're not dealing with also in regard to uh, being exposed to food supply that's been genetically altered. We're not dealing with p uh, smart dust, smart sensor technology that we're consuming which lies embedded in the intestinal tract. We're not dealing with the nano silver that's being sprayed on the crop which can cause male sterility and damaging the testic testicles of the males. Not to mention the spine and the spleen and the brain. We're not dealing, you know, we're not dealing with towers or constantly pumping frequencies at a higher range than they should and now 5g 5g is already going on it's been going on in some of the reservations in, in the land up in northern Quebec I've been getting calls from people there telling me that 5g is up and running and yet what's being told to the general population <clears throat> is that it has not they haven't got up and running yet but they are already experimenting on cultures that are not part of the the uh, normal societies we're dealing with indigenous cultures that are by far isolated so that they can conduct these experiments and none be the wise they're giving you all the native young people today cell phones they're getting caught up to the 21st century if you will they are forgetting their concepts their principles what made them and kept them they're exchanging the 
things of value for the junk shit that they're selling out in the airwaves. We are losing the battle in regarding to maintaining and sustaining our man and womanhood. We are of the race of mankind. Don't let anybody call you human. You are not human. You are of the race of mankind. Start thinking in those terms. You are a specific race. You come from a specific seed. You come from a specific creator. That's what you are. When we're looking at the Europeans today, European descendants being targeted by the mainstream, being eradicated, bringing in cultures that do not mix with the cultures at hand. This is not about tolerance. This is about common sense. If you have two dipolar uh, cultures with a dichotomy that is contrary to each other, all you wind up doing is creating bloodshed. You know, wars, fighting. Look what happened in Europe. Look at all the women that got raped. I was uh, watching a video from Sweden. Women go into the police station complaining, and majority of the complaints is they were raped by these infidels that were brought in from another country. They didn't come in to acquiesce. They didn't come in to blend in. They didn't come in to, con to contribute to the culture or to the country. They came in to create chaos and they wish to bring in a type of law that is conducive to their country they should have stayed home if that's what they really wanted but based on Sharia law if they were to be removed from their areas then maybe maybe farmers should get together that own pigs and release them into the into the area the areas then would become unclean for these people and they would leave. And the police officers need to stay outside of the no zone so that all those that would cross over the no zone that have been breaking the law, committing crimes, committing rape, could then be arrested and go through the due process of law. You would have to remove the women and children from the line of fire because these, these cowards would hide behind these women. These are not men fighting a holy war. These are uh, criminals hiding behind religion. Islam, people of it who believe in Islam, not everyone is a criminal and not everyone wants to do bodily harm to people. A lot of them want to just live in peace. And a lot of them have left the Middle East prior to all this so they can come to the Europe and come to other places so they could exist in peace because they couldn't handle their own, this, this dichotomy that was going on in their country. So don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Not all of these people are corrupt and evil, but the ones who have, have come in and tried to create a dominance by creating the, the disruption in, in society, by creating the rape and all these things that have gone on, and the violent crimes. These are not people that want to coexist. And for a society to be healthy, there has to be some kind of di diversity, but not to the point where people personal rights and choices and freedoms are being violated. This would stimulate an act of war in most places and they would have had civil unrest with these people and would have gone after them. You don't need you don't need guns, you don't need bombs, you don't need bullets, all you need is pigs. That's all you really need. And if you apply the the pig principle based on their Sharia, uh, Sharia beliefs that they are trying to advocate, they would leave the area because the area is no longer fit or clean. And they may go home. Those are the troublemakers. Those people who are really intentionally wanting to make something of their lives and do well and to coexist with other people, these people should also be given the opportunity to have that, irrespective of what they believe. That's the whole principles of, you know, of the United States and Canada, to give everybody an opportunity. And again, I always look at things even from a biblical perspective. When, uh, when you read John 3.16 and John 3.17, it talks about how Jesus came to save the world. That's everybody. People of Islam, those are the Hebrews, there's the Hindus, the Buddhists, uh, Catholics, Protestants, Christians, Baha'i, whatever. Native belief systems, he came to save us all. So, and I'm not, and I'm a firm advocate of this concept, that the salvation that Christ offers is for everybody. But not everybody wants it, and that's fine too. But if they don't want that, and if they don't want to, again, 
coexist in a peaceful coexistence that they don't belong with, with any of us. And this needs to be reiterated. And the political will needs to stand its ground with, a, with their own people. If the political will is not willing to stand with their own people, then they should be elected out of office and then arrested for, for treason to the country. That's what used to happen in the old days. If they're not looking to dwell, if the Prime Minister of the Parliament of Canada isn't looking to the interests of Canadians and looking to keep Canadians safe and prosperous in a, in a provide the environment for this kind of, of a, a living, then what are they doing there? What business do they have being there? And if banks and corporations are causing the corruption of a country, they too need to be removed. They no longer are welcome in your system, in society. And this applies to the United States, this applies to South America, this applies to Central America, this applies to the Caribbean, all of Europe, all of Africa, all of Russia, all of China, all of Australia, all of New Zealand, and any other country I might have missed. It's called respect. I'm harping on this because I see this to be a problem that um, no matter how healthy you want to be, if you're having disruptive influences such as this, it is going to constantly create more mayhem than we already have. We already have problems with our governments. We already have problems with, with institutions that are supposed to protect us, like the FDA and the health ministries of Canada, from chemtrails and nanoparticles in our food supply and genetics and transgenetics. But instead, we have organizations that are being paid lucrative amount of money that is doing absolutely nothing to benefit and, and maintain the health of its citizenry. We're giving people social medicine in Canada, which is about as useless as two tits, three tits on a bull. It's just completely useless. If you got a hangnail, it can help. You know, if you got if you got into a car accident, it, it might help. But if you're past the age of 70, you're coming to the age of 70, don't go to a hospital, don't go to a doctor, don't let them cut you open, don't let them give you any medications, because once you do, you're on your way out the door. Get your box, get your Nintendo, get your blanket because you will be in that box soon enough and once they put you in the ground, you are not coming out for weekends, uh, you're stuck. <laughs> We're looking at a lot of different things today. We're looking at things going on in the United States. They're being assaulted by people who want to break into the country, want to come in illegally. Good. It's a good thing it's happening to the United States and not Canada. Because if it was happening in Canada, they would already be in. They would have already come through. <laughs> Some people say, well, why do you say that? When Mr. Trump put a mandate on the United States with those who were legal, a lot of them came through Niagara Falls. And what happened was the customs officers were helping them come across and putting them in tents until they established them in the country into the cities, into the suburbs, so that they're now living here without any due process. This is an insult to the Europeans that came here that immigrated. This is an insult to anybody who's immigrated here in Canada. This is not about, you know, uh, aid, humanitarian aid. This is, this is a, basically, this is an invasion and the, the parliament has opened the door to this type of invasion. What's going to happen when they want to impose some of the, the nonsense that they want to impose in their, from their countries? And it doesn't mix. There are certain things in the world that don't mix. Oil and water, for instance. No matter how you shake it, no matter how you blend it, no matter how you, you uh, cook it, it doesn't mix. There are some things that will not mix. And no matter how hard you try to make it happen, it's just not going to. People are generally good, good, honest people who are wanting to do the right thing will <coughs> blend in. So when we're looking at things of health or things of what's going on, these are all part and part of all the things that's happening in today's times. Frequencies coming from the skies. Uh, homes being destroyed with some side or sort of photonic technology. They can target homes with pin pinpoint precision. You know, seeing houses being destroyed and land being cooked, but trees untouched, homes beside the homes untouched. This should be alarming people. 
Artificial intelligence is running rampant on the planet, running the banks, ruining the banks, running, running the governments, in, uh, uh, downloading laws that the AI is putting out this for, for uh, Congress or Parliament to pass. Fully integrating the new world order system operated by the artificial intelligence so it can run the planet. Creating the neon god that they wanted. Buckets of bolts, streams of data is going to become God for the godless. Is this what you really want? Is this what you're ready to accept? Being chipped, assimilated, uh, uh, rewritten, having your code rewritten, becoming an extension of a peripheral? Is this what you want? Or being a peripheral and an extension of an AI system? Is this what you want? Do you want your children to be tagged? Do you want them to be also assimilated to a machine? There are, but your kids are being assimilated right now with the cell phone. Cell phones constantly hitting them with a blue beam technology. It's, they're being hit with so, uh, sonal genetics, which goes through the uh, cochlea of the ear, the buzzing noises, the hissing noises, the high pitched noises. Is this what you want? Is this what you want? Willing to sacrifice your firstborn, your bloodline, so that you can have a toy, a technology, so that you can talk to your friends, so you can take pictures of yourself, so you can look like you're, ha you're, you're a, a ch uh, having a childlike lifestyle, having the, you know, taking a, a, a what do you call that? A smiley of yourself. Ooh. Are you willing to let a machine? Re reconstruct and reorient to your brain. Are you willing to let a machine implement thoughts and processes inside of you? Are you willing to let a machine to dictate how you should think, how you should feel? You know, some of the shit I see sometimes with people and what they feel and the irrationality of what they're feeling, it's beyond belief. Things they believe have no, no foundation whatsoever, but it's because AI has pepper them with programming and frequencies they, they now are wor working based on some irrational emotionalism making them think that they're doing something they're looking like as as something is being victimized or they are themselves are being victimized it's all nonsense it's all a game it's all by design to keep you unbalanced irrational emotional overly emotional overly anxious feeling rather than thinking. In these terms today we have to recognize that being healthy is going to require more than just listening to some jackass guru selling untested products or idea, uh, ideas and hypotheses about these products and what they're going to do and how and maybe perhaps they are going to work. Foods that you're consuming today loaded with programmed Technology. Every time you consume something, you're taking in bots and quantum dots and nano cages and fullerenes, and then they they assemble in your body. Things may come out that may appear to look like they're parasites, but they're not. Things that have this this uh, tissue-like protein, circular semiconductive material protein, and when you look through a scope, you see these tiny silver dots or these bright bright brilliant dots that are charged with energy charged with frequencies they're now opening the programming so that they can now assemble and create what may appear to be a, a fluke may appear to be a t uh, type of lime a tick a bug of some kind a flea who knows or maybe a fish or a claw okay that's the nature of of accessing a program and telling it what to do by design. And some of you are saying, well, isn't that a little far-fetched, Tone? Isn't that a little bit carried and getting carried away? Your TV does the same exact thing. You got a remote control. You hit a button, you turn it on. You hit another button, you can raise the volume. Another button, you lower the volume. You can, from that button, you can, from that remote, you can access your, your uh, DVD player or your CD player or your, uh, your A-Track player that might be attached to the, to the system or to the network. You can adjust your satellite dish but with another button. You can change the channel going up 100 channels, down 100 channels. It works on the same principle because these particles are like 
nano chips or nano programs that are embedded in these particles which can hold up to a terabyte of data once these this data is accessed it can now tell the particle what to do how to behave how to construct how to build how to repair itself how to replicate itself how if it's being assaulted by the, uh, by the autoimmune system or by something external a frequency an electrical charge a, a pulse a direct pulse uh, at it it can tell it can then assimilate the information and then come up with its own diagnosis to countermeasure the direct assault you're not just dealing with metal you're not just dealing with heavy metals or, or dense metal poisoning what you're dealing with today is a high volume of nanoparticles on the cellular level that is causing major mayhem with the communications network of the cells it's causing major mayhem with the communication networks of the organs it's causing major mayhem with the the uh, communications network of the DNA the immune system the whole concept of bodily functions and as a result you are now having networks of fullerenes and circuitry being built right into your body using your proteins to build this using your own DNA to build this Somebody's saying, well, what do you mean using my DNA, own DNA? The United States right now is an operating system, an AI operating system, that's functioning totally on artificial intelligence and DNA. China is getting the second one in 2020, and the United States is getting a third one in 2021 using DNA. These DNA AI operating systems can operate at 50 million functions per second. They're operating in petaflop speeds. That means in the quintillions of seconds. The human body is operating at 400,000 functions per second. 50 million, 400,000, wow, using DNA. And if the AI system needs to increase its volume of pro uh, programming or needs more data, it just grows more DNA for storage and speed. And when you're starting to consume foods that can have artificial and natural flavors, that also can be aborted baby proteins or aborted baby DNA or some lab-made DNA that's been put into as a flavoring agent, artificial and natural flavor. All the soy that's in a lot of the foods today are loaded with glyphosate. They're also no, loaded with nano silver and, and smart dust and smart sensor technology. You're consuming this not just in the soy, the broad leafy vegetables like chard, lettuce, collard greens, the broad leafy vegetables of carrot leaves and, and parsley will be loaded to the gills with the nano, with smart dust, smart sensors, you know, technology. You're going to learn, have to learn how to deactivate this technology in your body by using PMF pulses and then stripping the stuff out and then reloading the body correctly with the things that have been taken out. All breads, all grains, all cereals, all rice, all corn, all soy, all of the so-called pseudo-grains like buckwheat and, and quinoa and millet and spelt, teff, need to be put away as well they have not discriminated against any of these grains or pseudo type grains they have loaded these things up because this is what the globe consumes and by consuming these things the proteins that are in there will be nominal the sugars will be high and if they've been genetically altered the glutamine con the glutamic acid and the um, proline uh, amino acid will have become imbalanced these are the things nobody tells you about these are the things nobody will investigate these are the things that need to make you go hmm the foods you should can be consuming are high, high saturated fats high omega-6 fats so that your body can agglomerate and collect these things from within any high powerful enzyme would come in handy things like even white vinegar as a digestive aid uh, you may want to even use uh, different uh, types of antioxidants like zinc cola, uh, cl uh, chloride, copper chloride, potassium chloride, magnesium chloride, calcium chloride. 
Why are we talking chloride? Why aren't we? Why why haven't we been talking chloride? Why we should be talking chloride? Chloride is one of the body's main sanitizers in the system. Copper is a very powerful biocidal. Uh, zinc is a very powerful antibacterial, antifungal. Mix them together and you've got a dynamic duel that's producing a high powerful antioxidant and a high powerful defense mechanism and a high powerful capacity to uh, fortify the system's ability to resist the breaking down of this by this technology. We need to start replacing the minerals like magne magnesium, any form of a chloride, uh, citrate, malate, glycinate, and taurate. Taurate for the heart, glycinate if you need to sleep. But these are good forms of magnesium that you might want to consider using in regarding to uh, keeping the ATP production and the uh, bio biological function of the heart functioning. You may want to start looking at saturated fats like 35% cream. Try to get the cream without the polysorbate 80 and with the cellulose in it. If you are in Canada, there is products out there that Meadowbrook has a cream that doesn't have any shit in it. So if you can get that, by all means, go for it. The, in the United States, you may have to get something called cultured milk. I go to Michigan sometimes, and they have a store called Myers, and I don't. And I look at all the yogurt there, and the yogurt there is useless beyond belief. But I will get the buttered cultured milk because it has a high concentration of fat, it has a high concentration of bacteria, and it doesn't have anything else in it. So these are things you you might want to look at. Fermentation is another thing you might want to look at. Cheese, any cheese with, with again, saturated fat, by all means, consume. Cocoa butter, you consume. Coconut oil, consume. Butter, ghee, MCT oil, consume. Tallow, lard, consume. You need these fats. These fats will regulate a lot of bodily functions and can keep cellular integrity intact. When you're listening to these halfwit gurus and they start knocking saturated fat and they're knocking omega sixes so they can sell their omega three, this is where you have to step back and say, let's take a look at the right right research. You know, let's say, oh, it's got the DHA and it, it's got this and it, it's got that in it. But what they don't tell you that every every fish oil product, almost every omega three product that's being sold today, just about anywhere is rancid. It is loaded with metals that you cannot distill out. Distillation of essential fatty acids, that's omega-3, causes these oils to rancify extremely quickly because of the heat exposure. Even um, um, there was a German woman in Germany that made a flax oil with uh, cottage cheese to consume for cancer. She was using the glutamine and she was using the flaxseed oil as a means of regenerating the colon. Now, the flaxseed oil she was using was a flax that she was extracting fresh from the, from the flaxseed. She was pressing the oil fresh without any heat. And so she said that when you pressed it that way, it had the life expectancy of about 35 to 40 minutes. So you had to consume it within that time frame. If you did something like that, you might be getting something. But chances are, anything you're buying in the health food industry today on an omega-3 level, like canola oil, flaxseed oil, uh, um, perilla oil, fish oils, they're all rancid. All of them. You would have to put a high concentration of BHT or BHA into these things, or a high concentration of essential oil of rosemary, or essential oil of, of uh, sage. Uh, in these things before you seal them in order to help preserve the oil, uh, the omega-3 oil that is, was being bottled. It's important and imperative that you understand the nature of this, these type of chemistries. These gurus are goofy. Goofy gurus. And a lot of them don't have a clue what they're talking about. They read the text. They read the same syntax everybody else is reading. And so they decide to recite the same bullshit over and over and over. Making everyone think that because this guru and this guru and this guru are saying the same thing, there must be something to it. There is something to it. It's called making your wallet lighter and making you sicker at the same time. 
A lot of stuff coming from the health food industry today is by design set to cause more problems and more mayhem than you could shake a stick at. And this is what they're they're selling. This is what they're giving you. If some of you go into, into the health food industry or a health food store thinking you're going to buy something that might help you recover from a particular ailment you're dealing with and you get sadly disappointed because you listen to somebody on the radio show or on a, on a TV or whatever uh, computer uh, and they told you if you use this stuff it's going to work on your on your issue and when you take it home it does absolutely nothing when you're dealing with issues you have to start thinking in terms today not just pathology not not some you know uh, bio biology but you're going to have to think in terms of synthetic biology we're constantly being exposed by it whether it's through snow through rain whatever they're dropping from the sky somebody from arizona sent me a picture or a vid, a vid of um the particles in the air that they were being released had some kind of program or life form into them because they moved around and they went up and down and they just traversed the air currents as they were being dropped on this from the sky we're seeing a lot of different things today. You cannot take anything for granted. If you feel something in the respiratory, right away go get some MSM, about five grams, some garlic, extract the garlic and the MSM in an alcohol base, filter it out, and then use half teaspoon of increments or quarter spoon, spoon increments so that you can de deal directly with what is going on in the respiratory, the, the sulfur, from the garlic, or it would give you the uh, cysteine. The DMSO would give you a sulfur. Uh, sorry, the MSM would give you a sulfur, which would convert to DMSO, which would allow for better penetration, permeation, and and would assist in the chelating of some of these me metallic materials or alien products that are inside of us, trying to alter our genetic code. It's like we're being drafted without our consent. They've come in and says, you're going to fill a conscription. You are going to become one of us. We're going to turn you into one of us. We're going to download all this data so you could become a important cog in our wheel. You can be a better slave. You can be a better soldier. You can die for a cause. <laughs> in the name of AI, I'm going to kill you. In the name of AI. <laughs> Hilarious, but it's sad. So sad. Those of you who've been targeted and you're being hit with frequencies, you feel full on. You know damn well what you're feeling. You're feeling your body's being completely disruptive. You feel on your minds or lo you're losing your minds. You're in a state of anxiety, overload all the time. You're not. You're trying to understand what's going on with you. You're feeling the targeting from the frequencies. You're feeling the targeting from. Um, your, your cell phone, you're feeling the targeting from whatever, you're getting overloaded with thoughts, all these thoughts are designed to scare you, make you feel afraid, keep you in a state of ang uh, angst so that they can ma further manipulate and exploit you. Get some niacinamide, 500 milligrams, five times a day. Combine them with pa uh, uh, potassium uh, chloride, and magnesium chloride, 100 milligrams of each with the 100 milligrams of, B of um, of a B1, um, sorry, B3, niacinamide, combine them, utilize them every three hours, every three hours, until your brain chemistry starts to form correctly, until you get the stuff out of your head, until the, the, the technology that they have put inside of you Till that's removed, till it's removed from your body, till it's removed from your DNA, till it's removed from your, your uh, genital area, till it's removed from your legs, till it's gone from the sky, till it's gone from the food supply, we will be dealing with this on a regular basis. There is not going to be any quick fix on this, I will tell you this straight out. There is not going to be a here's a solution and it will be done in a day or so. That ain't going to happen either. If you're thinking that, go back to the Disney Channel and get beat up some more. And when you're ready to have a real wake up call, come back here. You are going to be dealing with all kinds of craziness. So you have to have your wits about you. You have to have your brain about you. So you might want to start looking at nootropics. And there's all kinds. B12, B1, B3, folic acid, choline, and acetyl. These have all nootropic-like effects. Nootropics are supplements or foods that can help augment the brain's capacity to function. That's what nootropics do. They augment the brain's capacity to function. 
Maybe you can remember better, you can focus better, you can read longer, you can comprehend right away, you can, you can uh, uh, write things on a computer or write things on a system so that is uh, before it can even collapse. Your memory can improve, your mental focus can improve, you may start dreaming in color. This is indicative of brain chemistry correlating and functioning the way it's supposed to. Don't think in any way, shape, or form, don't think for one minute that this is going to go away anytime soon. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. No, it's a plane. No, it is bio nano warfare. Look in the fields. Oh, what are they spraying? Are they spraying fertilizer? No. Are they spraying are they spraying pesticides? No. What are they spraying? Nano bio warfare. Look at the squirrels, they're all dead. Look at the sparrows, they're not they're dying. Look at the, the finches, 85,000 of them died. Uh, look at the bees, they're dying. Wow, look at the insects, they're dying. I don't see so many deer anymore. Maybe they're dying too. I don't see any more elk anymore like I used to. Hey, perhaps they're dying as well. I'm not seeing any eagles in the air like I used to. Perhaps they're dying. I'm not seeing any red-tailed hawks I, like I used to see when I was a kid. Wow, maybe they're dying as well. Oh, my dogs, my cats, they always seem to have allergies. They always seem to be licking and biting their feet and their claws. They've got these red spots going on. They've been biting their fur off. What could possibly be causing this? Could it be, maybe, nanobiology, nanobiotech, synthetic biology? You're feeling the same itching. You got you got lesions forming. You got patterns forming on your skin. You got triangular patterns. You got circuitry patterns. You've got circular patterns. You've got embedded. You've got what looks to be like a a um, a pit in your cheek where you got looks like you've been bowled bowled or or emboweled out. Of, out of, things have been removed from the inside of your cheek, and so you got this sagging little dip inside your cheek. What could have caused that? What could possibly be happening? You got marks all over your body. Scar tissue everywhere. Your, vag your, your vaginal area is creating, causing discharge and clumping during your monthly cycle. The guys, you guys are peeing out stuff and it's suspending in the toilet. What could that be? What could be happening there? Women have used the vinegar and water and iodine formula and seen things come out of their vaginal opening, fur and other fibrous materials that shouldn't have been there. How did that get there? Were they putting something in the hygienic products? Are they putting something in the deodorants besides aluminum, like titanium? What does that do? You got titanium and aluminum. One affects the estrogen levels and can, uh, can turn on the estrogen and the other one shuts down the male androgens by going into the testicles and literally shredding the testicles. This is the reality we are in today. This is what's going on. Something as simple as having intercourse with a husband and wife could lead to health issues, not because of an STD, but because of a program. A program that was embedded in each person so that when they made contact with each other, the program got activated just by the activity alone. So we're dealing with a variety of things today that we never could have imagined. Never. We have an artificial intelligence named Sophia talking to us about all kinds of bullshit so that it can basically uh, placate and prepare people for the inception and the uh, assimilation of artificial intelligence with biology. Biblically, when you look at the, uh, the dream of Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel, and you look at the bottom of the feet, what do you have? Iron and clay. Ooh, what does that mean? Biology and technology. It's one take on it. It's not the only take, but it's one take you can look at. We went from the golden age of King Nebuchadnezzar down to the age of technology and biology, which means that we've been devolving, not evolving. We have become more dumb and stupid beyond belief. The only difference today is we are waking up and we're seeing the level of stupidity that we have been following. And now we have the opportunity to stop the stupid shit and to turn it around or at least turn ourselves around. 
and acclimate to a more intellectual or more spiritual or more con uh, proper way of, of um, doing science and doing mathematics and seeing the nature of creation and how God created creation and so how we can look at creation, understand it and work with it. Not to understand it and defile it to defecate all over God's creation or God's concept of creation. He says it was good. I'm still looking for the good. The only good I see on this planet today are people who are waking up, people who are trying to make it a better life, trying to help each other. That's what's good. The planet is dying. It has been dying with frequencies, it's been dying with chemicals, it's been dying with aerosols, it's been choked, it's been puked, it's been defecated on, it's been shit on, just another word for defecation, and we have been violated by the perpetrators causing the destruction of this planet. Don't blame mankind. Blame the ones who have created the anomalies and the deceptions and the lies and the bullshit that has led mankind into this, this quagmire we're in today. When you look at the garden, what was the temptation that the serpent did to Eve? What was the temptation? You will be like God. And that's the problem. Women today want to be goddesses. Men today want to be gods. We're neither. We're flesh and blood. And when our time comes, we will stand before a living God. And that living God will rip you a new ass for being so stupid. That's the way it is. My humblest opinion, you might want to go to the real God, the living God. We are not gods. We, can, we are be evolving. If we are going the right way, we will evolve to be like gods. But in this flesh, even biblically says, ye are gods, but you shall die like men. We will die. Don't be deceived on this God crap that they want you to believe you are. Nobody's a god. President of the United States, Prime Minister of Canada, the Queen of England, the Pope in Rome, none of them are gods. They are entities at best. Maybe perhaps from the race of man, who knows? For sure. But they too will one day die and stand before the living God. Can you imagine this? Have you ever thought about this, some of you? That the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords left his throne, left his throne, to come down here and to save our sorry asses. You, I mean, you ever get that? You ever think about that? The, 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 uh, the uh, impact of that, that concept. The king of kings left his throne to come down here to save us. We must be of some value. And those who are perpetrating that ye are gods, that you shall be like God, every one of them wind up dead nowhere to go in fact absorbed by the abyss hmm so much for godly godhood <laughs> if anybody's ever interested in really reading what jesus had to say i would suggest you get a bible king james version and start to read the gospels and i will tell you this straight out don't read the Bible from a religious perspective. Read it from the perspective that it was written in. Don't listen to it because some Catholic priest told you it means this, or a Protestant minister told you it means this, or some Christian told you it means this, or some Hebrew tells you it means this. Read it. Let God show you what he says and what he meant. That would be my suggestion to all of you. That's the healthiest suggestion I can give anybody today. Don't read it based on uh, hearsay. Don't read it based on, it's, uh, it just sounds like it's, it just makes sense. You read it based on what it says and do what it says to the best of your ability. Don't get caught up in religion. Don't get caught up in anything that is going to entrap you and ensnare you. And when you hear people perpetrating some nonsense about a, a person who had propagated the gospel historically and now they're find, saying that these people were heretics and that they were wrong, these people are the ones that are wrong. If you are, are a believer in the faith, then you should not have any qualm about 
Paul or any other of the apostles. And if anybody's trying to dissuade you into thinking that these people have made a mistake, these people are vultures, these people are part of the AI network, and they are trying to bring you down. Read it, believe it, do it. What it says, not what anybody else says. And if you don't know what something means, don't worry about it. Sooner or later, God will show you. Just keep, just keep to the course. And that's my take on what I'm telling you on that regard. You have to start paying attention. Things are happening and they're going to happen at a quick rate. I can tell you so much what to do and how to help you. But I'm going to tell you something. There are going to be days where everyone is going to be looking one-on-one -on -one with the Great One. And that's the bottom line. So I'm not trying to push religion. I'm, I'm anything but religious. But I will tell you this. Nobody reads anymore. And everyone has an opinion about Jesus. This is the funniest thing I've ever seen. Everybody will read an encyclopedia. Everybody will read a dictionary. Everybody will read a university text, a high school text, a grade school text. Everybody will read some kind of book, love story, fiction, nonfiction, science fiction, you know, whatever, coloring books. But nobody stops to read that book. You will read books from India. You will read books from China. You will read books from the Middle East. You will read books from Africa. You will read books from any other part. But when it comes to that one book, or several books actually, nobody opens the door. Might want to give it a try. That's all I'm going to tell you on that one. Anyway, in regard to where we're at today, we are in dire times. We are dealing with technology and biology that is inside of all of us that is trying to override our DNA, override us in, in ways we cannot begin to perceive or um, see ahead. We are being violated. Food supplies, you might need to start looking at how to grow your own food so that you can have a cleaner food supply. And I don't mean growing it out in the garden. If you look up in the sky and you see the chemtrail clouds, the mists and the particulates, if you go on YouTube, you can see that these particulates are actually active and moving like, a, like they're alive, and they're, but they're not. If you plant something outside, you have to cover it up in some kind of dome. And when you water these things, you have to have inside the dome a, hose, a hosing system so that all you have to do is turn the water on. Because once you lift the dome, you will expose these plants to whatever is out in the atmosphere. Grow them indoors if you can. Section off a room. Grow pots. Get pots, wooden crates, whatever. And plant what you can. Grow what you can. Do what you can. Start learning how to raise chickens indoors using these reptilian lights, lights that they have for reptiles that can, can induce a, uh, the spectrum of sunlight. See what you can do. Raise the eggs. Great. Create an aquaponic system where you have fish grow in a, in a container. Feeding them uh, duckweed or other vegetation. And when they excrete or when they take a dump or take a shit, the water then is being extracted out, filtered through the, through the uh, stone uh, containments where the seeds are planted. The bacteria from the fish's fecal matter will then activate the proteins in the seeds, which will then allow growth. The nitrogen and other things also will benefit. The water goes through the system, comes back filtered and aerated. These are things you might want to consider. You may want to look at starting to grow certain trees like little uh, kumquats as a for your for oranges. You know, you can grow an orange tree indoors. We, we you know, they're all over the place, and that can be done. It takes time, but you may want to look at some of the vegetation that you cannot eat outdoors. But then maybe if you grow them indoors in a very isolated spot where you don't have nano uh, nano being dumped on them, you may be able to go back to eating some of these things. These are the water. How are you for water? Are you using a distiller? Are you using a reverse osmosis system? If you're not, you are getting high quantity of nano. Uh, distillation and reverse osmosis, os osmosis uh, removes 95 to 96 percent of the nano in the water. All these other bottled waters with their baloney about, oh, it's got to be alkaline. If it's all acidic, it's going to cause your problems. Your guts need to have acidity in order for you to again uh, utilize the proteins and the minerals inside the colon 
You have four acids in the colon, butyric, propionic, acetic, and lactic. These are all acids. Alkalize those and you shut down the capacity to absorb your nutrients. So again, start thinking, you know, start understanding chemistry, physics, electronics, uh, nano, nanobiology, synthetic biology. Start understanding the nature, how God created these plants to work in our systems to perpetrate and propagate health in us. Learn and understand how God gave us animals to utilize as well to further strengthen and propagate us like eggs, whey, you know, cheese. These are all products that can help us. Meat, grass-fed meat or meat that is being grown indoors uh, under a uh, key environmental um, uh, positions where they can get what they need. We got to start reevaluating what we got to do. We may have to look at ways to neutralize the nano in the food supply we're consuming today. We are in famine. And we're heading for hermaphroditism as well. The final accumulation of men and women in one system. Boys and girls today don't know if they're a boy or a girl. The boy has a, has a plumbing. The girl has none. And we're, going to tell, and we're going to tell them that, oh, you can choose what you want to be. How is that possible? Anatomically, genetically. But we're going to give a child the, the rights to make this decision when they don't even know who or what they are in their place in the world yet. This is being done by who and for what reason? Next stage, and I've been saying this for a while, we're heading toward hermaphroditism, where you're going to be you're going to have a genderless society. A non a, a species that will be incapable of propagating itself to sustain its life. This is the, like the final uh, phase of the extinction of mankind. If it cannot propagate itself, it can if it cannot further uh, replicate its seed in, a, in offspring and, and other children then what you have is the final termination you know back in the day they made suicide seeds you know Monsanto before Bayer bought them or Bayer did as well made suicide seeds in other words the seeds would be planted they would grow and then they would die after they died they, they couldn't reuse the seed this is where this is where mankind is going now mankind is going in that direction we are already in that direction we're now corrupting children so they do not know their identity they don't know what they are genetically and the educational system is propagating this bullshit it's incredible incredible and the reason why it's going on is because the children they are eating foods that are highly estrogenic uh, or have uh, other hormones which is causing mayhem in their endocrine system and they're confused because the estrogen levels are off the map. Boys are thinking they're girls because they got all this estrogen. Girls are thinking they're boys because the estrogen is creating a, a testosterone or an androgenic response. This is a corruption on levels you can't begin to fathom. And then after that, hermaphroditism. The two shall become one. Hey! We'll create a genetic anomaly. We will no longer have a man or a woman. We'll have a hermaphrodite. And you won't be able to say anything about it either. If you do, you might get in trouble. You know, you're not a tolerant person. You're speaking hate speech. What a load of bullshit. Hate speech. That's not hate speech. Hate speech is when you purposely go out of the way to talk in, der in derogatory means about a person in some way, fashion, or another. Calling somebody a hermaphrodite or a transgender and, and saying that this is wrong, this is a violation of, of uh, mankind's DNA or a violation of creation, is not a hate speech. This is a speech, not even a speech, this is a statement of fact. And we are, not, we are allowing, and this is the other thing too, everybody's sitting on their ass allowing these governments to dictate what is hate speech. People who grow up together ethnically will use ethnic terms on each other. Some terms may sound derogatory. People in, in that I grew up with of color had the N word, and and people of the Hebrew culture are being are called the J word. You know, but among their friends and their peers, they will use this language with each other in an endearing way, not to criticize or condescend or to talk in hate. 
But if somebody from the outside was to hear this conversation, they'd think, oh, these guys are racist and they're pi racist pigs and they're prejudicial. Nothing could be further from the truth. But we're so worried about uh, the nonsense and the gains and the ridiculousness of, of uh, our verbiage. You know, you're working in a, if you work in a shithole, you're going to talk that kind of language. I don't care who you are. Sweating your ba you're sweating your backside off, you're getting very little money, you're going to talk salt of the earth. I got news for you. Truck drivers, when they're driving down the road, I can tell you for a fact that some of the language that comes out of their mouth is not too godly. Especially when somebody's you know, driving ahead of them at about 70 or 80 miles an hour, gets in front of them and hits the brake. Oh, the language that comes out could shatter the glass that's in front of them. So and I understand that as well. I, you know, I used to be an extract driver. I can tell you for a fact, mm, some of the languages wasn't too, too sweet. Especially when people did stupid things like that. So be advised and understand the nature of what hate speech is and what telling the truth is. You know, you need to tell the truth. You need to call it as it is. You know, when the society or the system of society or the systems in society are creating this kind of disruptive mayhem uh, on the general population, altering what is not natural, altering to something what is that's not natural from something that's natural, we should be all yelling in an outrage. And the law enforcement should be protecting the citizenry that is speaking out against these abominations. Not arresting them. Not causing them to disappear and die or to disappear. And all of a sudden you don't hear from them again. This is utter bullshit. But that's, that's what goes on. I was talking to a fellow, a friend of mine. Uh, he's a Jordanian fellow. Good guy. Really good guy. And, you know, uh, we were talking and, he's, and I was talking about the Middle East and how I, I told, told him I think the Middle East should all get together and kick everybody out. Get rid of everybody. He says, it'll never happen. He says, he says, you got, you know, hidden uh, spies that will, if they hear you talking, they'll come and arrest you and you disappear and you never be heard of again. This is what's going on in the Middle East, which nobody tells you, nobody talks about, you know. We have the same thing in the United States and Canada. It's called censorship, hate speech uh, regulations. Same kind of bullshit, total bullshit. But that's what, this is what we are be led to believe. Telling the truth could get you killed today. No, no doubt, no lie. But if you don't tell the truth, you're acquiescing to a lie. If you don't tell the truth, you are agreeing to the bullshit. And to be quite honest with you, when you look around you, you don't have a life. You, have, you don't even have an existence. You're nothing more at this stage uh, but an experiment waiting to be exploited. That's all you are. You're being pacified with distractions. You're being pacified with material bullshit that really amounts to nothing. Oh, they're nice toys, and you can, and they make life a little easier for you. But this is the pacifier. This is the, the to pacify you, so you don't make the waves. You don't make make uh, uh, changes. You just go along until one day they decide that now it is your turn to be exploited. It's your turn now to be experimented on. It's your turn now to see what it takes to break you. There was a science fiction movie called The First Wave. It was, it was done in the late 80s, early 90s. And the show starts off how aliens had picked test subjects and they conducted experiments on them. They were firing frequencies on them. They were causing all kinds of, of uh, direness inside them, anxiety, overwhelmness. They, they caused them all to break. There was 50 test subjects and they all committed suicide. They couldn't take it anymore. But one didn't break. One saw them for what they were. They showed them as aliens, demonics. And he had a Chuck U. Farley attitude. And that's what pro prolonged or stopped the invasion of the planet because you had one person that was ready to be defiant against the bullshit of the day. And you know what? There's seven billion of us according to their statistics. 
7 billion of us, even if 1% of us was defiant, it could make a change on the planet in ways we couldn't begin to imagine. And some of this bullshit would stop. And they will hit us with frequencies. Who cares? They will hit us with games, uh, stalkers, whatever. Who cares? When you cre uh, create a defiant act and you're not scared to die, they're afraid. They're very much afraid because they can't control you. And if you're a believer in the faith, you're going home anyway. So you know what? Let's see how we can be an intimidating force by using things that are right, the things that are good, and speaking the truth because that will make a difference. Whether in this life or the next. That's how you got to see it. So again, I'm pointing this out because a lot of you are targeted, being targeted and you're feeling left out, you're feeling alone, you're feeling like you're being picked on, nobody wants to listen to you, you've been isolated. Guess what? You're in an experiment. And you need to de 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 develop the capacitance to be defiant. You need to develop the capacitance to come up with countermeasures to this insidious assault on your personage. You need to come up with a way to remove this nano biotech that's inside of you that's festering and growing. You need to develop ways to block blue beams from coming into your eyes to affect your programming. You need to get rid of those cell phones, those high pro profile cell phones, and stick to a simple 1G technology. You need to remove from your presence things that will allow access to you. As long as nanobiotech is embedded inside the cellular matrix, it will have a way to acquiesce and integrate with you, transceiving, rather, receives, transmitting and receiving from you information and data. And as you get that down lower and lower out of your body, the access points become more and more minimized. Using supplements like zinc chloride, copper chloride, iodine, vitamin C, grapefruit seed extract, uh, rosemary, sage, thyme, peppermint, uh, savory, oregano, marjoram, cinnamon, cinnamon essential oils, all those things I just mentioned on the essential oils. When you start dropping the bread that's loaded with the technology that can alter your programming, when you drop all the grains that can alter your programming, when you can uh, drop all the cereals, all the rice, all the corn, all the soy, which are program changing uh, genetic material in your body. When you drop these things and you start learning how to correctly eat meat and potato, animal proteins, saturated fats, whey proteins, uh, cottage cheese, yogurt, you know, uh, mushlanka, uh, kefir, any kind of fermented dairy, dairy coming from a cow, coming from a goat, coming from a sheep, straight from the tit into the cup, that's what you should be drinking. You know, using foods that are, are naturally being fed the things they're supposed to be eating, not in being injected with all kinds of chemicals and, and uh, antibiotics, which also could be injecting into them a form of nanobiology or nanotechnology for a better nano delivery method. Start thinking on how to create toroidal fields inside your homes, how to create a Faraday inside your home and being able to ground that Faraday so that if frequencies hit the Faraday cage, it has somewhere to go. You have to ground these Faraday cages. If not, they will act like a capacitor. Once they get charged up, they will hold that static charge until you discharge it. Ground it. Put inside toroidal fields within the cage. It will create a secondary barrier so that anything that may get by the first barrier can be dispersed. Wear grounding straps when you go to sleep. Try to find units that are on the lower levels. If you've got a two-story home, sleep on the first floor. Build, build, build your Faraday cage. Start wearing materials, shielding materials, under your shirts so that frequencies can... Uh, be less effective in altering your, who, your, your biochemistry. 
Wear repelling units that, can, that you can wear inside on you to repel frequencies. Start using saturated fat to maintain cellular integrity so when frequencies do hit them, the water inside can disperse them rather than these cells burst, releasing hydrogen and, act, and the hydrogen acting as an amplifier of these frequencies. Nobody should be using these hydrogen products because again, they're there to sabotage you on a high level. They have never tested these things with terahertz frequencies, never. And terahertz frequencies uses hydrogen to amplify its amplitude inside of you, causing more damage to the mitochondria. Don't use the C60. I mean, you'd have to be a flippin' idiot to be using this thing. It's something that's never been tested, and you're going to be the rat. He calls you a rat. Go look at. Go look at uh, uh, SMU L Love True SMU Love True. She's got on the YouTube channel something called Ak. C60. You can see Cliff Hill himself calling you a rat. Avoid these gurus if you can. Start using things to the best of your ability. Uh, teas that can alter, it can impact high levels of antioxidant properties. Use combinations of all kinds. Experiment, explore. These are things that are going to make a difference. Start developing EMP technology because you're going to need it when the time comes. When they come for people, they're going to use not necessarily transhumans, but they may use AI technology. AI technology is contingent of a, tech, of a program able to receive its programming paradigm. Just a thought. You might want to consider ways and means to neutralize G 5G. 5G is on the laser frequency band, high EMF band. You may want to put mirrors all around you to block and deflect 5G frequencies. It is a direct beam. They're telling you it's a direct beam. means it's a targeting beam. It means if you walk in the line of the, tar of the beam, you are being targeted and hit. Where are some mirrors? See what happens. Okay, I'm going to call it a day at this point. I will mention some sites. Uh, Brian396.com. I'm always pr propagating him. Uh, BlueSky.com. Uh, you may check her out as well. Uh, you've got me as well at AugmentedForce.com. Again, check it out. I just mentioned uh, SMU Love True. SMU L-U-V-T-R-U. Go check out her YouTube channel. She has some phenomenal information on there as well. She has got some good stuff. Go read it. Go understand it, assimilate it, utilize it. That would be the prudent thing to do. If you go to my website at augmentedforce.com, you will see all kinds of links. On the main directory link, you will see a recipe for a YouTube. In that recipe for a YouTube, it will be on the left side, left column. When you click on it, you'll see the anti-nano bucket. I, I would encourage you to build it. And you will see the anti-nano solutions. I would also encourage you to read it, download it, and utilize it, especially if you start seeing red lesions forming on your body, or you're seeing mimetics coming out through your skin, or fibers and wires, and they will come out in assorted of colors, reds, yellows, uh, pinks, lavenders, fluorescent blue, fluorescent green, and all kinds of wonderful colors. So if you've seen this, you are being exploited. Check it out, check out the stuff there. We've got a flash drive, we've got uh, all kinds of uh, triangles and buckets also on the site. I will say this uh, again reiterate that as at by the end of this month I will not be taking any more orders as of November 30th I will not take any more orders until the new year because this year has been a fiasco with the mail. I've used UPS, I've used USPS, I have used uh, um, um, Canada Post and no matter which way I've gone it seems like this year the mail has been a cluster screw job. So I'm not going to mail anything out in December because I do not want to have to re resend things to people because I've been doing that as well. Some people still have not gotten their parcels or packages. So I have to, again, resend these things at a cost. Uh, next year I may reiterate on my site that if I send something from Canada and Customs gets a hold of it, you're on your own. There will be no refund, no exchanges, because like I said, this year has been a learning curve on these things. 
things that are small usually get through like the flash drives or the uh, tinctures and things of this nature when we showed you how to build these things on the YouTube I meant so that you could be able to arm yourselves if you can't do it and you still need me to send it I will tell you straight up that it may be a crapshoot you may or may not get the product coming like a triangle or a bucket just to give you a heads up if it's in Canada no problem uh, growing across the ocean or the Atlantic it may not be a problem um, as long as the Prime Minister of Canada and the President of the United States are, are having their little hissy fit this kind of shit goes on so just to let you know I'm giving you a heads up Alrighty, listen, thanks for tuning in. I, I pushed this one a little further because we haven't had any shows for a while. Uh, I will post this tonight and get it out to all of you. So anyway, learn, share, do what you can, and, and evolve, advance, cooperate, you know, collect, be a collective of your, on your own, develop, grow, and change. Alright, till the next show, to your health, eh? See ya.